So some things don't always go the way that you expect them to go or the way that they've gone in the past. And one of those is here in the greenhouse. Let me show you what that is. Now we did a video the other day about our propane heater when we had that nasty winter storm and how it has worked for us in the past. The video was specifically about how long a propane tank will last using one of those heaters. But let me show you what happened in the greenhouse. Everything was frozen, it's dead, and it's rotting now in the greenhouse. It stinks in here. Why did this happen this time to us with this bottle top heater and not in the past? Let me explain. So this heater had worked for us in the past with temperatures that were actually colder than what it got last week. But here's the difference and I did not think about it and it's totally my mistake. We had a smaller greenhouse. This is a much larger greenhouse than what we had before. I figured it would still work since the temperatures were gonna be a little bit warmer. It obviously didn't. And here's another thing that happened and it was suggested to me to watch out for that had never happened to us before and that's the propane tanks themselves froze. So when I monitored on my Bluetooth thermometer, the temperature drastically falling one evening, I came out and this little one was almost completely frozen and condensation frozen around the bottom and there was barely anything coming out of it. There was hardly any heat. So I quickly screwed it onto the top and I took the advice of somebody in the comment section and thank you whoever that was, is to wrap blankets around it and try to insulate the tank. Well, as you can see, my blanket job was hastily done in the middle of the night and it didn't obviously work. So it didn't keep everything uh, warm enough on the tank to put out enough heat. And I actually cranked it on high to the 15,000 B2 setting and that still didn't help. Now, something else I didn't think about and somebody else mentioned was that even if you have a smaller heater like this, circulation of the air, the warm air, is key and I again duh I know these concepts and sometimes you just overlook them or you're just not thinking straight and I wasn't thinking straight so yeah circulation of this warm air from this would have been great I don't have any electricity out here in the greenhouse I do need to take care of that sometime in the near future um, because that would have helped some so for next year I'll have a second one, I'll have some air circulation, and we'll see how it goes that time. Because, like I said, in the past, I never had a tank froze. This has always worked for me. But, hey, you live and learn, and we'll learn from this mistake. Let me show you what was destroyed, and it's pretty much everything in here. Well, of course, the eggplant, totally wrecked, as were the peppers over here, totally gone. Uh, those beans that were coming back, yep, gone. The arugula over there actually doesn't look terrible. Looks like it got hit some. I really like arugula, that's some tough stuff. All the leaves are gone off of the beets and I'm gonna have to pull those up. More beans over here gone. Even the broccoli, which is a cool weather crop, got wrecked. Our fava beans were totally taken out pretty much. Even some of our herbs, which are perennials, uh, they, they got hurt pretty bad, especially this mint. But I know there's roots underneath that should be completely viable. That calendula got hammered. The echinacea looks okay. This mandarin orange that we had put in a pot years ago at, that has never fruited uh, got hit a little bit, not terribly. The Swiss chard got wiped out pretty bad. There might be one back there that survived, I don't know. Even the, the Chinese uh, cabbage, with the Napa cabbage, looks pretty bad. Usually that's pretty hardy. Our poor banana, we were trying to get some fruit on it. That's not gonna happen this time. Collards, one of the hardiest cold weather crops, looked like it got some damage. As does the, or as did the Nero de Toscana kale over there which actually is the best looking thing in the entire greenhouse. Our moringa plants weren't gonna survive anyway, but they were wiped out. Of course, these were never gonna survive. This was just a novelty, a fun thing. Somebody gave them to us, I was thankful. These are jackfruit trees. They would have never grown in here anyway, because it's a huge tree, but they were wiped out. 
That mint over there and oregano look good. There are a couple of the two-year-old broccolis that look fine in here. I think I might leave them. And of course that one lone sweet potato that was left was completely hammered and I just pulled them out right now. But the thing I'm most sad about are those tomatoes. Look at how many tomatoes we had on this. Some were red, some were turning, some were still green, and oh my, they are just a rotten bag of juice right now. That's all that's left and it stinks and I gotta get them out of here. Some of our other citrus took a hit, but not too bad. This one looks actually really good. This Filipino calamansi right here. But this lime behind it looks like it got nailed pretty good. And actually there was a lime right there that's totally rotten now. And we'll pick that off and get it out of here. This other lime next to it got roughed up a bit, but it's actually in pretty decent shape. So like I said, the point of that video the other day was to tell you how many hours you can get out of these on the different settings. That was the point. But in the midst of telling you how much that was, I told you that this could heat this greenhouse and it did. But I'm here to say, sorry, it didn't this time. So if you bought one of these, you have a greenhouse this big, it might not work in every situation. So like I said, for us going forward, we are going to get some circulation in here and we're going to get maybe another one of these and put them on either side of the greenhouse. This one I always had in the center so it would radiate out, but it was radiating this way instead of behind it. So maybe having two or maybe having a double top and a single top, we're going to have to experiment. And I know some people are going to say, well, there's other ways to do it that are better and cheaper and so on and so forth. Well, yeah, maybe, but this is what we have. And like I said, there's no electricity out here. So if I'm going to put a pellet stove that needs electricity to burn the pellets, and if I'm going to put some sort of electric heater, electricity, obviously. And yes, I could get an old school wood stove and put it in here. I've never had luck with using the black painted barrels, as I had mentioned before. I just, you need a ton of them to be able to save that energy, that heat energy inside of them. I would have to completely take out everything on this side of the greenhouse and put tons of barrels just lining the other side. And that's an option. Yeah, everything's an option. I'm trying to do the best that I can and this time it didn't work out. So sorry about that. All right, I want you to have a beautiful blessed day and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.